right, so hello everybody. Uh, my name is Jergus. I'm a student at here at the University of Bristol, and my talk is called How to Not Be a Cool Developer. Uh, first of all, sorry for the clickbaity title. The talk is actually about single page applications, and specifically about what can we do to get SPA like experience at the website <laughs> and avoid actually using SPAs. <laughs> so, first of all, what are the few reasons that you might want to introduce an SPA to your stack? First one that comes to mind is snappy page transitions. Uh, first of all, the last talk said that JavaScript pages are slow, forget about that. They're fast for the purpose of this, <laughs> this talk, they're really fast, right? Uh, so, snappy page transition, real-time search. What I mean by, mean by that is the classic 101 Angular example. We have your search field, table of posts, you type something in, the table updates on the fly. Looks really nice. And another reason why um, many developers like to use SPAs and APIs and all of these things that, that sound really cool is that they are, in fact, cool things. You get to learn new stuff. You get to do interesting things. You get to build REST APIs. You get to learn how Webpack, Babel, ES678, whatever the number <laughs> is, uh, you get to learn how promises and observables work. So, so it, that is really interesting from the developer point of view. So now, what are the things that, whoop, Close your eyes, please. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, what are the things? What are the reasons that you might not want to use SPA? And that's exactly the things that I just said. Those are the cool things. In fact, building a REST API is a really cool thing. It's it's nice technology. It's a good tech stack. But you have to know how what REST is. You have to know how to build JSON APIs. You have to know how Webpack works. And honestly, who does who does know how to do that, <laughs> right? Uh, so by, by introducing these in technologies into your tech stack, you, you make it more interesting, right? But at the same time, the complexity just explodes. You, you basically have to have two different applications. You have your API, or your JSON API, or XML, if you're into that kind of thing. <coughs> and then you have your front-end application, Angular, Vue, React, whatever. So you basically have to maintain two different things. And that, that is just uh, way more complex than having a classic server-rendered web page. Right. So uh, now I want to take a look at implementing one feature that is really easy to do when using SPAs, using the server-rendered uh, server approach. And the feature is uh, real-time search. So this is the result that I want to end up with, right? Uh, so we have our, <laughs> our list of posts, our search field, user types something in. We want to update the list of posts according to the query. So how would you do that using, your, using SPA? First of all, the user loads the web page, the SPA loads, it initializes, then it sends a request to the server, gets back a bunch of JSON, which represents the post, then uses the framework, the JavaScript framework itself to render the table. Then when user types something into the field, we listen for that event, and then just basically on the fly, on the client, we render the list. Uh, yeah, but that requires us to use SPA. So what I'm proposing is, or the, the approach that I'm talking about is, is let's use server-side rendering, and let's come as close to that as, as, as possible. So how are we going to do it uh, in this example is this web page is going to be uh, server side rendered. So when user enters that URL slash post, they hit enter. Uh, from the server it comes fully rendered HTML page. Then we write about 10 lines of JavaScript, approximately, to, to, to get that feature, to get it, <coughs> get it work like we want to. And how we're going to do that is we are still going to uh, listen for the input input event on the search field. And then once we get something, once we get the search query, some for example, doc or something, uh, we send an asynchronous request to the backend to the same endpoint that renders this web page. And what we get back from the server is just, uh, just the table, so just this part, which is going to be a fully rendered HTML table. And we basically just replace this. This is not some amazing technology. This was around, what, 15, 20 years ago? I wasn't alive at that time. <laughs> Right, uh, so let's take a look how we might want to implement this. So this, is, this uses Laravel syntax, but it's, it, it's not specific to Laravel. Uh, so this is your post controller index method. So you, you first, first thing you do, you fetch your post from the database. You pass in the request query parameter, which is, if you imagine the URL going slash post, <coughs> question mark query equals art. That gives you all posts about art. So first you, first you fetch all of the posts from the database, and then you basically just return the view that uh, return the view that actually renders the entire HTML page with your head, head tag, body tag, and all of those things. OK, so let's add one more feature to this controller. Uh, and that is this conditional. 
this conditional checks if the current request is in fact an AJAX request. So if it's sent from the client, and if it is, it renders just a sub view. It renders, technically it renders a different view, but this view is included in, in this one. And I'll show you how it works in a minute. But that's the entire approach. So uh, we are going to be using this endpoint for the synchronous and also for the asynchronous requests. And I'll show you how the, how the templates look right now. <coughs> so this is how your, how your index view might look like. So you have your, you have your uh, heading, then you have the, the search field, and then you basically just include the sub view. You want to do that because uh, conditionally you want to return just this part, and it's way easier to do it if you do it this way. Right, so the sub view looks something like this. It's a basic table that just renders a list of posts, nothing else. Okay, now the interesting part. So we want to get, uh, right now what we have is user goes to the endpoint, uh, endpoint, they get a fully rendered HTML page, right? We want to make it interactive somehow. Okay, so this is, what, five lines of JavaScript that get you almost there, or this is a pretty good, <laughs> a pretty good uh, replacement for that. So how, how this bit of JavaScript works is that you listen on the input event on the search field, that is uh, a basic JavaScript thing. So every time user types something in, this callback, this function, gets executed. Then we basically construct a URL using this, uh, this static part, and then get the value from the, from the input field. So if user types in art, this is going to look like query equals art. Then what we do then is we send an asynchronous request. This is not a real uh, Ajax library, but you can imagine doing that in, in, in jQuery, Axios, or whatever. So you send that request, and it goes to the same endpoint as we type in the browser. But we added that conditional to the post controller, remember? That, that one thing that said, if the current request is in fact an AJAX request, return just the sub view. So when that, when that request completes, it returns you just the rendered table. And what you do, the, like the only thing that you have to do, you don't have to render it. Like in, in the SPA approach, you get back a, uh, an array of JSON data. You have to render it, you have to somehow process it. This is fully rendered. This is how it's going to look in the end. So the only thing you do, you get the data from the response and place it into the HTML page. That's it. Uh, okay, there is one improvement I want to do to, to this example to make it more interesting, and that is this line, history that replace state. This is a native browser API. And what this does is that it, it replaces the current URL in the browser. So if user types in uh, art, for example, <laughs> to the search field, and they only see the uh, the list of posts that are in fact about art. We want that to reflect, uh, we want that state to be reflected in the URL. So when they refresh the page, they get the exactly same set of posts because that's how it's supposed to work. And uh, this API allows us to do that, basically replace the current URL without reloading the page, without sending them um, to, to, to a different page, basically. <laughs> okay, and this is the result. So user types something in, if you Look at that, the table gets updated on the fly. If you pay a close attention to the URL bar, you see that the query is also updated on the fly. And uh, I just missed that. <laughs> if you look here, when we type something in into the search field and then refresh, we are on this URL, therefore we get the same set of posts. All right, so what about this approach? <laughs> it's not interesting, it, it's boring, really it is. We implemented this entire feature in, what was it, six lines of JavaScript, three lines of PHP. It's super boring. You, like, you can't make a talk about it, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> it's not interesting. No one's going to come. Uh, it has, this approach doesn't have a lot of moving parts. It, it uses the, the technologies, the stack you already know. It, if you want to write tests for it, it's, you, know, you know how to write tests for a PHP site. And if you don't really know how to write tests for, for your uh, JavaScript part, you don't have to. It's six lines. I mean, it's okay. You'll probably get that right. And uh, that's the message I want to leave you with. Thank you. <laughs>